In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform both a chi-square test for goodness of fit and a chi-square test for independence. So let's start with a goodness of fit test. And as you know, this test is to be performed with one categorical variable for which we can count the number of occurrences in each subcategory or bin. So for this particular test, we're going to take a look at our class data data set. So let's go ahead and take a look at the data set first. We'll navigate to my libraries, data sets, and class data. And for today's problem, we are going to focus on people's eye color, which can be found right here. So in the survey for the class data, we ask people their eye color, and we want to compare the sample counts that we have here in our survey to specified proportions. Now, in a chi-square test for goodness of fit, you can look at the null hypothesis in two ways. Either that the variable is equally distributed amongst the different subcategories or bins. So in other words, in this case, we have equal proportions of brown-eyed people, blue-eyed people, hazel-eyed people, etc. Or you can test the null hypothesis of a specific distribution for these different subcategories or bins. So I can say I have 60% brown eyes, 30% blue eyes, and so on and so forth. The chi-square test for goodness of fit will work with both of these types of null hypotheses. So before we perform the chi-square test for goodness of fit, I want to take a look at the distribution of my sample data. So to do that, I'm going to go to my tasks, I'm going to go to statistics, and one-way frequencies. I'll maximize my workspace. I don't want to work with sashelp.cars, but I want to work with sas. I want to go ahead and work with datasets.classdata. And the variable I want to look at here is eye color. And I'm going to go ahead and just take a look at the distribution of my sample data. So as you can see here, this is my current distribution. My most frequently occurring eye color is brown followed by blue, followed by hazel, then green, and lastly gray. We're going to want to take note of that order. That is going to be important when we perform our chi-square test for goodness of fit. So let's go ahead and perform the test. So I'm gonna bring back my taskbar. And for this test, we're going to be using a pre-made SAS program, not a task built into SAS Studio. So I'm gonna to go to server files and folders my shared file links, and I'm going to drill down to mcla one and SAS progs, and I'm going to use the chi-square goodnessfit.sas program. All right, so this is already filled out for this particular test, but here's how you set this up. First, you're going to specify the name of the data set for which you're going to perform the test, and here in my case, it's datasets.classdata. You enter the name of the column that you're working on. In our case, we're working with eye color. And then you're going to specify the null percentages or the null proportions. Now, the order in which you enter the null proportions, so this is every single eye color here, one, two, three, four, five. There are five different eye colors in my data set. The order in which you specify must be in the order of from highest to lowest frequency in your data set. So in other words, when we go back to our one-way frequencies results here, I want to go ahead and put in the null percents for the brown first, then blue, then hazel, then green, then gray. It's important that I do them in that particular order. So that's what I've done here. Now, if I thought the proportions were equally likely, which is that other kind of goodness of fit test, then I could just put in 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. The point is, is that they have to add up to 100%. So I enter those three pieces of data and I run this test. So you will notice the top of the results, I'm going to be shown the frequency that they occurred in my data set, which is identical to what it was here in our one-way frequency results. I'm also then going to see the null frequencies or the null proportions here and where it says test percent. You're going to see a bar chart of the distributions. And then if I scroll down, the important statistic that I'm interested in here is where it says 
PR greater than chi square. And you'll notice my P value is less than 0 0.0001, which means that I reject the null hypothesis that eye color is distributed according to my null model. So it, it's not uh, a good fit to my model that I've stated in my null hypothesis. My chi-square statistic itself is 34.19, give or take, and I have four degrees of freedom, which makes sense because I have five eye colors, and remember degrees of freedom is just five minus one. So again, the important thing here is that I have a chi-square statistic of 34.19, and my p-value is lower than 0.05, so I reject the null hypothesis that eye color is distributed according to the null model that I entered here in my program. Okay, so that's chi-square test for goodness of fit and how to read that. So let's move on to chi-square test for independence. I'm gonna close some of my tests here just to clean up my workspace. And for this particular test, I'm going to use our favorite data set, sashelp.cars. So now if you remember, the chi-square test for independence is a test where we are comparing two categorical variables to see if they are independent of each other. Remember, we have to have data that we can count, so we must be having categorical data, and we have to have two columns of categorical data. Whereas with chi-square test for goodness of fit, we were dealing with one categorical column for chi-square test of independence and technically homogeneity, we have two categorical columns. Now this does use a pre-built-in task, so I'm going to go to tasks and I'm going to go to statistics and table analysis. And if this looks familiar, when you were doing probabilities, you are right. This is the exact same task we use for probabilities. You were actually performing a chi-square test for independence and didn't even know it. So we're gonna clean up our workspace a little bit here and maximize it. It is unimportant as to which column you assign to the row variables in which column you assign to the column variables. It, it does not matter. The test will compute either way. So I wanna test the hypothesis here that the country of origin, so the country that a car comes from, is independent of whether or not it will be front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, or all wheel drive. So in other words, the drivetrain. So country of origin is independent of drivetrain. So those are the two variables I'm going to look at. So first I'm gonna change the data set and we do not want anything in data sets. We want now SAS help, and we want dot cars. And our row variable, again, is either origin or drivetrain. It doesn't matter which one you put in there, so we'll just start with origin. And column variables is going to be drivetrain. If you put drivetrain in row and origin columns, doesn't matter, same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that task. And you'll see a contingency table, if you remember those from probability, but that's not what we're concerned about. We wanna scroll down here, and we wanna take a look at the chi-square statistic here at the bottom. So we have four degrees of freedom, which makes sense because we have a three by three table, and remember degrees of freedom is one less in either direction, so three by three is really a two by two, and two times two is four, so we have four degrees of freedom. We have a chi-square statistic of 40.18, give or take, and a p-value of less than 0 0.05. In this case, it's pretty much almost zero, less than 0 0.0001. So what does that mean? It means we reject the null hypothesis that drivetrain and country of origin are independent. Remember, the null hypothesis of a chi-square test for independence is that the two variables are independent of each other. So since this p-value is below 0 0.05, we can conclude that it is more likely that these two variables are not independent and that the country of origin does have something to do with the drivetrain of the vehicle. All right, so that's it. That's how you perform both the chi-square test for goodness of fit and a chi-square test for independence in SAS. Thanks for watching.